Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk to you about hypothyroidism and whether or not it can cause high blood sugar. Now, to skip right to the point, to answer this question, can hypothyroidism cause high blood pressure? The answer is absolutely yes, and if you have hypothyroidism and it's not being treated, your blood sugar is going to suffer. Uh, but like most things I talk about, there's a little more... Um, complexity to it than just that. And so I want to dive into it and talk about the nuances. And I want to talk about other factors that can also influence your blood sugar that people who have hypothyroidism tend to also have. Um, and this will help you understand how to treat it as well. So that's why this is really important. And we can't really, well, I want to first first start a discussion by talking briefly about insulin resistance. Now, many of you have probably at least heard of insulin resistance. Um, if you haven't, just bear with me just for a sec so I can explain it because it is important. Insulin resistance is um, a state of cellular resistance to the hormone insulin. Um, now, what happens normally in your body is that when you consume sugar or when you're stressed or pretty much anything that your body needs uh, to use uh, or any demand on your body that requires it to use blood sugar by the cells, it will secrete a hormone called insulin. And what insulin does is it sends a signal to take the blood sugar in your blood, in your serum right in the, in the blood and move it into your cells so it could be moved into fat cells it could be moved into muscle cells whatever it is it, it moves it out of the bloodstream into the cells what happens is in, in insulin resistance is that your body can't do that as well anymore so even though insulin is coming out and trying to sit, trying to take the blood sugar in the, or trying to take the uh, the sugar in your blood and move it into your cells your body is resistant and it can't it stays in your blood serum um, and or in your serum and that's why your blood sugar elevates with insulin resistance now, what's important is that pretty much any dysfunction of your thyroid can result in this, this thing called insulin resistance, and that includes hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Now, we're not talking specifically about hyperthyroidism today, but I want you to understand that any dysfunction to your thyroid, whether it's too much or too low, can result in insulin resistance and therefore high blood sugar. That's sort of how it works. Um, but so, so the question, I guess, really is, how can you treat that if you have hyper, hypothyroidism? What are you supposed to do? And I've had a lot of people ask me questions about thyroid medication and how thyroid medication impacts their blood sugar. And so I've seen some people say out there, they suggest that certain types of thyroid medications cause um, insulin resistance or worsen high blood pressure. But that's not really the way that you want to think about it. So remember, in hypothyroidism, it's the state of hypothyroidism that causes the insulin resistance, and it's a state of hyperthyroidism that causes the insulin resistance, which means that you need to find somewhere right in between um, with, so that you don't have insulin resistance. And the way you do that is by using your medication. It's not the type of medication that you take, it's how much medication you take. So if you're taking even a small amount, and it's too much for your body, it will cause insulin, insulin resistance. And this is where people get confused because like, they think, well, I took Synthroid and it caused insulin resistance, or I took Cytomel and it caused my blood sugar to increase. That may be true, but it's not the fault of the medication, it's the dose that you're taking. So it's not the thyroid medication per se that's causing the insulin resistance, it's the state of thyroid function in your body. And that state is influenced by the amount of thyroid hormone that you are taking. So does it, does it worsen or treat insulin resistance? I would say the majority of the time, people are being under-treated with their thyroid medication. So they're having high blood sugar because just from the fact that their, their hypothyroidism is not being treated adequately. And so when they take thyroid medication, usually it drops their blood sugar because it treats their insulin resistance. So that's kind of how it works. But on the flip side, it is absolutely possible if, for instance, you're abusing T3 for whatever, weight loss or whatever it is, or maybe you're just accidentally taking too much, something like that. That can also lead to worsening blood sugar as well. So it's more about what your body needs and you getting that amount as opposed to blaming it on the medication, even the type or, or um, the name or, or the like, whether it has T4 or T3 in it. So just consider that. But to take this one step further, so, so that's, sort of the, that's sort of the interplay of thyroid medication and, and blood sugar. Um, but there's, more, there's other reasons why if you have hypothyroidism, you might also have high blood sugar. And that has to do with cortisol. Now, we've talked about this before um, in, in other videos um, on my channel. So if you've seen those, you probably have, um, you're probably familiar with this. But there is a connection between your adrenal glands, specifically cortisol, and your thyroid function. And this connection is such that if one system is down, um, it brings the other one down with it. And we know this, this is just, this has been well studied, um, so it's, it's not a debatable topic, it's just what happens in your body. It's the connection between these hormone systems. So if you have hypothyroidism, meaning you have an insufficient amount of 
um, high, of thyroid hormone in your body, that condition is associated with or, or may cause a condition of elevated cortisol as, in your body. And elevated cortisol can also worsen blood sugar because cortisol is your stress hormone. It's released in times of stress. And normally when that happens, it's trying to get your body to utilize some of that blood sugar um, for your muscles and for your brain and for things like that because it wants you to use those, um, it wants you to use that energy to to tolerate the stressful situation that you're under. But a persistently high level of cortisol um, causes or worsens insulin resistance. So if you are somebody who is who has hypothyroidism and you're in that big group that I mentioned previously that you know, maybe you're just not being treated adequately with thyroid hormone, there's a chance that you're going to have high blood sugar from your thyroid function, right? Because we already explained that. But also, you may have worsening high blood sugar and insulin resistance from your cortisol level as well. Um, and so that's sort of the connection between those two things. And and this can also occur, by the way, from stress. And so I have this, this thing here that I'm going to, just a little algorithm or equation, I don't know what you want to call it. But basically what happens is this, if you, so you have a stressful situation and because of the connection between your cortisol, between cortisol and your thyroid, that can decrease your thyroid function, which increases insulin resistance, which increases blood sugar, which increases your weight. So this is sort of the, the big um, chain and, and how these systems are connected. And this is one of the problems that many people with thyroid um, issues have. And I think the end result that a lot of people are concerned about is the weight gain and the weight loss resistance, meaning it's very, very, very difficult for patients who have thyroid disease to lose weight. And a big part of that is this insulin resistance that we're talking about. So that, that's the impact there. Now, taking it another step further, so we have those two, two issues. And then, of course, your diet um, also plays a role. And so probably there's a high chance that you will understand at least the connection between the food that you put in your mouth and how that influences your blood sugar. Uh, especially now, especially because the ketogenic diet and low carb diets are all the rage, right? These are these are just going around. Everybody knows about that. And the reason that these are said to work is because they are specifically trying to reduce um, the amount of sugar that you consume, or just carbohydrate in general, which reduces the amount of insulin that your body would produce, which reduces insulin resistance. So that's why these things work. Now, it turns out that protein can also stimulate insulin as well as carbohydrates, but not to the same degree. So there's some more complexity there. Um, I'm not going to get into the diet too much for this conversation because I want to focus more on the thyroid side. Um, but you can read it. I have, I have a lot of information there um, on this blog post if you want to look through that. So let's talk about treating um, insulin resistance if you have hypothyroidism. What are you supposed to do? So I have, let's see, one, two, three four, five, six different things that you can look at here. But the first thing that I would say is you need to optimize your thyroid medication. And that means to find the amount that your body needs. And you can do that by looking at your free thyroid hormones. Your, the TSH is helpful um, and valuable in some instances, but when it comes to these more nuanced, um, I would say more important things, you want to be looking at more than just the TSH. Look at your free T3, look at your free T4, and put it into context with your other thyroid labs, such as your TSH. Um, because it, the TSH is just not going to be sufficient to tell you if you have enough thyroid hormone um, in, the, in your serum or not, and that's really what matters. The second thing is you can consider taking insulin sensitizing supplements. So these are supplements which when you consume them, they help your cells become sensitive to the insulin as opposed to being resistant to it. And so these supplements, they work through a variety of different ways such as reducing uh, the impact of, of inflammation and that, that affects on uh, um, insulin resistance, but then also some of them just help automatically with blood sugar as well. So berberine, fish oil, alpha lipoic acid, and chromium, those are a list of just some of the supplements that could potentially help you. The other thing you can do is consider taking insulin sensitizing medications. Now you may not have to do this, but some people that have really bad insulin resistance may have to. Um, and that, that stems from the fact that even these individuals, if you just have really bad insulin resistance, it doesn't matter if you get on the ketogenic diet or if you consume virtually no carbohydrates. It's just not going away. And I've seen this in patients and there's probably some of you out here out out there listening to this, and maybe you fall into this category. You can go on the ketogenic diet, but your blood sugar is not dropping, your insulin level is not dropping, and your weight is not dropping. If that's the case, you might just be one of these people that has really severe insulin resistance, and diet is not sufficient to reverse that process. If you fit into that category, then yes, maybe you need to take these insulin sensitizing medications. So metformin is one of those, uh, GLP-1 agonists, SGLT2 inhibitors. There's a bunch of medications that you can use temporarily to try and reduce the insulin resistance, and I've included them here if you want to take a look. The other thing is, of course, exercising correctly. Um, so certain exercises, especially if, if the intensity is ramped up, 
can sensitize your body to insulin, and these are very important. Now, one of the problems, and I would caution you um, about intense exercise, is that once you reach a critical threshold, too much exercise actually negatively impacts your thyroid. So you, you really, again, you sort of have to find that sweet spot right in the middle where the intensity of your exercise isn't too much as to inhibit your thyroid, but it's sufficient enough to reverse insulin resistance. So this is a lot of this is just a balancing act, and you, it's helpful if you have somebody who has done this before just to guide you to know how much you should be exercising, how much you should be um, eating, do you need, what supplements do you need, do you need medications, where's your thyroid at? All of these things can kind of play together. And then, of course, clean up your diet. We talked a little bit about that, so I I won't go into that in detail. And then there are, of course, other medications such as LDN, which can help reverse insulin resistance, but also affect um, other systems in your body, such as your thyroid. So there's other things that you can do. It's not like you're completely out of luck if you fit into this category. But that's sort of the the, the complexity and the interplay in a, in a brief way um, of how your thyroid impacts your blood sugar. And so this can be, a, this is very, very important if you are somebody struggling with weight loss or if you have insulin resistance because you're not going to be able to lose weight until you reverse that insulin resistance. So if you have any questions about that, um, please feel free to leave them below. I'll do my best to answer those questions. But otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.